Hi teachers, thanks for coming back to join me because I have some special information for you that will make the Better Alphabet song better, stronger, and faster when you do it. Now you know that this is something you're gonna be singing twice a day every day because it will build the muscle memory connection between the sounds and the symbols in the brain. And that's really what we wanna do is we wanna put into the mouth muscles, the sounds that the letters are making as the eyes are taking them in. So that's the reason that I really hit hard with the kids about eye glue and muscle mouth. They have to see what they sing and sing what they see. That forms um, a, a strong relationship or connection between the two, between the speech to print or sound to symbol relationships that kids need for reading and for writing, which is of course what all of this is about. So if you are watching this as a video online, you will, of course, with your kids, be looking at the letters as I'm pointing to them. If you're in the regular classroom doing this outside of this video, you're gonna point to the letters that are actually wherever they are in your classroom. Usually they're above your board. So you would be pointing as you go. And this is the ideal, is when you're in the classroom, in the physical classroom, you wanna reference these anchor posters where they live. So while the video, this video, is fun to watch, and it's a great insight into how those sounds look when they're being made, and you can see my mouth position, and kids can still focus on the letters, the best way to focus them on the letters is to point to them where they live in your classroom. So please make sure that that is the focus practice because this song isn't just about giving them the skills of the letter sounds, it's about giving them the strategy to use them, which means where are they? Where do I go to get them to use the b or the d to either figure out the word bigger dog or to write the word bigger dog? And when you turn this video off, everything disappears. So it's like tools that just become invisible and they're no longer in the drawer for kids to get. That's why you wanna make sure that you always visit them where they live, whether it's a letter anchor or a secret story anchor, because the secret stories are the same way. You wanna visit them where they live on the wall so kids not only know the skill, but they understand the strategy, which is how to get back to it, to use it for reading and writing, which is of course, again, what all of this is about. Now to that end, We've got our eye glue as you're pointing to those alphabet anchors in your classroom, or as I'm pointing to them in this video. Muscle mouth is another story. Muscle mouth is where you really, really work your lips, tongue, and teeth so that the muscles can take the responsibility for owning these sounds. We're trying to bypass kids' cognitive readiness to remember them, and instead let the lips, tongue, and teeth take it in like they would a song like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Their mouth is already prepared to make a sound for the word star. They didn't remember the word star. It was just part of the motor memory process that moves through those muscles. So that's our in. That's our earlier developing area of the brain that we can tap with these three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old kids. It's just a song, but it's a song that packs a powerful punch because it's a song that's gonna give them access to every possible thing a letter can do by itself. Now, these aren't secrets. These are the individual letter sounds, but some of them make more than one sound. Some of them make three sounds, <laughs> like why? And the good part about this song is the most likely sounds are sung first. So when kids sing, C says k -k 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 -k, but it can also say s Guess what sound they're gonna have come out first when they're trying to read? The k. If it doesn't work, they got another trick up their sleeve. S. So if the word's not cat, but it's circus, they're covered to attack it with both. So that's the goal of the game. Muscle mouth, eye glue, see what you sing, sing what you see. And I must have said that to my kids a thousand times. So go ahead and let your kids know. We are training the brain to connect these sound symbol relationships and cement them together. That means you don't want them looking at you or each other. And that leads me to the next thing I wanna mention, which is, hey, you're doing these fun cues for ah, or for eh, or for it. Why don't you do something for some of the other sounds? Like, why don't you pretend to be a cat for C? Or why don't you pretend to be a dog for D? Here's why, eye glue. If I'm a cat, I look really fun as I'm pretending to be an animal of some sort or anything. The problem with that is, where do kids' eyes go? They leave the C and they go to Johnny, who's the best cat in the class. And Johnny won't be in the word cat, that C will. So kids have to see what they sing and sing what they see. We want the least possible distractions. So if kids are just enjoying and moving, which normally we would love for them to do, but not for this song. This song has a different purpose. 
This is to connect sound symbol relationships. So you might ask, well, then why do them for the vowels? No choice. You cannot rely on the muscles to capture those vowels. They're too nebulous. They're too ambiguous. Ah, eh, eh, ah, ah. Barely any variation between them. Kids need a different door to go through to capture them, and that door is a back door. What it is is it's a dramatic action based on a social emotional feeling. Like when you don't know the answer to a question. Ah, poof, there's your short you. Or when you're pretending you're a little old lady who can't hear. Ah, poof, there's your shorty. Kids aren't trying to think about lip position, tongue position, mouth shape, articulation, auditory issues. None of that comes into play when they're doing a dramatic action that's just gonna happen to land them in the perfectly hooked short vowel sound. So that is why there are cues for the vowels. We need them. It's the only way for kids to instantly access those much more highly developed sounds at an early age. Normally the vowels are taught last because kids don't have the developmental readiness to capture them or articulate them or even hear the differences but they don't have to, not with a better alphabet song. All they have to do is sing and then use those dramatic actions for those trickier sounds. And it will take about two weeks before kids are starting to not just own these, but use them with the secrets that you're also teaching simultaneously. That's so important teachers because a T is only valuable with a TH. Kids need both. As a matter of fact, if you were a betting person, they probably need TH more. Now, I'm not saying TH is more or less important. I'm just saying they're both important. And how hard is it to tell kids that they're a couple letters that don't get along? And guess what they do every single time they can? Which is why they're not allowed to sit together. But guess what? They don't listen. So guess what they do every time they get a chance? Sit side by side. And if you don't believe me, pick up any book, look at any page, every single page on almost every single line. Guess who you see? sitting together, even though they're not supposed to, T and H. And every time they do, now the picture, the secret story picture shows the T and the H with tongue sticking out. Every kid in your class could tattle on a friend right now if they saw them stick their tongue out at someone. And they can go home tonight at dinner and tell their mom who got in trouble and why, because they stuck their tongues out. And it was them, Johnny and Susie. So the same way they track back that information, those social emotional connections that they already have and understand, are what will tie them to these otherwise complex phonic sounds that they're not supposed to get until first or second grade, which is a real shame because you can't read or write anything without them. So it's those and these individual letters that we want to rise like a flood. So have fun with the Better Alphabet song. You wanna do it twice a day. And again, ideally twice a day, pointing to the actual anchors they are going to have to get back to. If you're doing this online teaching, then you're gonna be showing me either in this video or in the other one where only the letters are visible. But in the physical classroom, please, please, please make sure that your practice is focusing on the actual anchors that you have. And then use this one for fun to just do something extra. The Secret Stories Better Alphabet Song builds those reading and writing muscles. These videos are more for fun to let kids exercise them, but in a familiar space. Now, the last thing I need to say is about some of the sounds you will hear me make. I am not going to sing R says R, 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 even though I know some of you want me to. Now, I'm also not going to sing R says Ra, 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 because that's over the top. But here's the thing. The secrets are actually allowing kids to read and write with these letter sounds. Normally, you teach letter sounds and you can sing R or M mm for M, and you can do that because kids aren't going to use them to read or write anything anyway because they don't have what letters say when they come together. So it's just letters for letters sake. Now with the secrets. With the secrets, it's letters because that with the secrets, in other words, if you know the sound letters make by themselves, and then you know the sounds they make when they get together, guess what you can do? You can read and write a whole lot. But in order to make that happen, you have to think that way when you're teaching those individual sounds. So if I tell kids, R says, R, 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 how will they learn that E, R, I, R, U, R says, R, R, how will they distinguish the two? So I'm going to sing R says R, 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 R. It's going to be a combination. You're not going to hear a big uh at the end of the voice consonants, but you will hear a slight shadow schwa. B says B, B, B. I'm not going to say B, 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 because cutting that off is just as detrimental as the additional sound that we are afraid could creep in and cause issues for blending. So you're going to hear things slightly different, but I assure you there is a method to that madness and it works. It's just a different perspective because these aren't letters in a box. These are the code. And it's the first dimension of a three-dimensional code that kids get all of with the secrets. 
So thinking like that, you're heading in a different direction with them. And that is why you will hear a slight release of sound, that little little tiny shadow schwa, instead of it's not checking the box and saying they know the M sound. It's knowing the M sound and having the sound you can actually use to read and write. That's the difference. This is going toward a different purpose at a far earlier age. So with all of that said, you can find more information about this and the secrets in your secret story book, but especially about the shadow schwa that I am talking about. And um, aside from that, I hope that this video helps you and helps your kids as far as connecting these mouth positions and sounds as they're being made while still hopefully keeping the focus primarily on those letters because that's the key. And you'll notice in the television are the visuals that your kids have access to in those mini mats. And those are really important, those mini mats or the anchor posters. If you have those better alphabet anchors, these will help kids connect the dots and recognize that, oh, that's the same as the one that I have. So that if you are working remotely online, kids have a way to track back and still use those for reading and writing at home. Um, if you have your own anchor charts with the alphabet letters on them, that's perfectly fine too. You just wanna make sure that they're accurate. So if you've got a xylophone for X, that could be an issue or an orange for O, that could be a problem. If that's the case, you're welcome to utilize the ones I have. If you have your own and they're good to go, just make sure you slip your secret stories, vowel posters and sneaky Y poster and Q U poster into your existing alphabet. And then you should be fine with whatever alphabet train you're using. So on that note, I am uh, gonna tell you thank you for sticking with me and watching this and I hope it's helpful to you and to your children. Bye-bye.